obviously you start to, to actually catch these guys side sessions bullpen sessions how does that communication um that that preparation i guess change for you uh versus what what you've been doing well i think the the the, the biggest thing is as much as i watch as i uh, you know, want to get to know somebody personally, uh, all you can do to, to really get to know somebody is that, that experience of catching someone. Um, so that means catching as many, as many bullpens, as many sides as I can, uh, catching them in game situations, uh, you know, whatever it may be there. You can watch as much video as you want. You can talk as much um, as you want, but at the end of the day, you, you have to get that experience of, of actually being on the field together. And, and um, you know, so that's, that's going to be the challenge of, of spring, especially, uh, during times of COVID, just, you know, it, it's tough to be around each other all the time, you know, with all the, the regulations and protocols in place. And um, so, you know, finding finding out a way to, to overcome those challenges of being able to to be together as much as possible. That's that's our, our goal for the next several weeks. Next question comes from Tim Healy from Newsday. Hey, James, similarly to that, uh, if it were a normal world right now, like say, say a couple of years ago when you changed teams and joined Chicago, what would you do differently to get to know your new pitching staff? Yeah, uh, in a in a pre-COVID world, there'd be a lot more, um, you know, going out to eat with guys, uh, having guys over the house to, to, you know, if they've got families, come hang out with my family just to you know, kind of do life together um, and be be away from the game of baseball per se. Uh, so that that is a challenge in itself. That um, you know our time is limited together. So uh, you know, thankfully it's it's 2021 and we have uh, you know cell phones and FaceTime and Zoom and you know all that great stuff. That, um, that that's hopefully going to be able to to make up for the lack of actually you know being able to do things uh, you know away from the field. Sure. And when did you arrive in Port St. Lucie and who have you been able to catch so far, maybe bullpen sessions wise? Yeah. So uh, with, with the protocols and having to do intake testing, we actually haven't been able to be on the field together, um, you know, as a unit. So I've, uh, I've only been on the field one day and it was actually just with, uh, with Nimmo and McNeil uh, playing a little catch and then hitting a little bit. So uh, tomorrow will be our, our first day as, as a pitcher catcher, you know, combo on the field. Got it. Thank you very much. Next question comes from Dishas Dozar from the Daily News. Hey, James, you mentioned, you know, in a normal world, you would be going out to eat with some of these guys to get to know them better. Just similarly, what are some of the weirdest or toughest protocols that you're facing right now that might be giving you a tougher time to get to know them? Yeah, just the, um, I mean, the, the things away from the field, that, that their, the regulations and protocols in place make it tough, but also at the field. Um, you know, nobody likes to, to wear a mask and sit and talk, you know, be six feet away from each other, trying to talk things through or, um, you know, the video room is, is a lot more, you know, monitored and, and limited um, in a sense. So there, there's just a lot of different things that uh, I guess we took for granted, you know, pre-COVID where, um, you know, you could just walk into the video room at any time of the day and, and sit down and get on a computer and, and watch film with, you know, three or four guys around a, a, a one screen. Um, so that, that's, that's one of the, the biggest things is just, uh, you know, how we have to be spaced and, you know, that, you know, they don't want guys, you know, hovering around each other and, and being in the same location for too long without being spaced out. So, um, it's going to be a lot more one-on-one -on -one type things. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can, we, we can figure out ways to, to do it efficiently. Great. And then after playing in the AL central for so many years, um, and taking a look at the tough teams in the NL East now, um, just what do you think of the division as a whole and how do the Mets fit into that? Yeah, the, the NL East is no joke. Um, you know, you look at uh, the, the types of players on, on every team and, and then the, the teams that have been assembled. Um, it's, it's a very tough division. And, uh, you know, I, I really like our, our team here. I think that uh, the moves that were made this offseason to, to pair with what uh, was already here in-house um, I think exciting times are ahead and I, I really look forward to, to competing with, with all my new teammates. Thanks. Next question is from Justin Toscano from the record. Hey James, you talked a little bit earlier just about how you've got to eventually catch a guy to, to truly learn him, build that relationship. But after the Mets signed you in the off season, what was your routine like to get to study those guys over film and know them as much as possible before you got to Port St. Lucie? 
Yeah. Uh, so it started with um, just getting access to to video um, of, of everybody, and then uh, you know getting to do my own little bit of, of studying, and then it really went to the next level. Um, had several Zoom calls with uh, with Hef, the, the pitching coach, and, and Brian Schneider, the, the catching guy, and um, just getting their their opinions and hearing what they have to say about each guy. And uh, that way, when we show up here, you know, now that we're here, I'm not asking them questions, I've already picked their brain and I already kind of have that, that foundation of, of what each guy has, what each guy likes to do, maybe some key words that they need or that they like, uh, you know, different things like that. Um, that way, you know, I'm, I'm already, you know, prepared and not uh, trying to do, do too much at one time. And, what, and heading into camp, what do you think is this team's greatest strength? There's a lot of strengths. Um, I mean, I, the, our rotation, I really like our rotation. Uh, you know, I, I think you, you look from, from top to bottom, there's a lot of strengths. Uh, our lineup, there, there's a lot of depth there. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to pick out one particular thing as, as being a strength. I think that uh, I think this, this club really honestly is built to do a lot of things really well. Thank you. Next question is from Tim Britton from The Athletic. Hey, James, uh, you know, going off of Deesha's question about being in the AL Central, uh, what was your reaction when you saw the Mets make the trade with Cleveland for Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco? What, what's been like going up against those guys for as long as you have and now being in the same clubhouse as them? Well, first and foremost, just the respect that I have for, for both of them, uh, you know, not as not as, uh, just as players, but also as individuals um, playing against them and then also hearing from uh, their their teammates. They're they're phenomenal you know, individuals, phenomenal human beings and, and, and great teammates. Uh, so hearing the news that we trade for them, um, you know, I was, I was obviously very excited to, to be able to be on the same team as them, uh, but also, you know, no longer have to face Carlos Carrasco and uh, no longer have to try and figure out how to get, get Lindor out. I get to sit back and, and enjoy uh, watching the show. Um, so, yeah, no, that was, that was really exciting. In uh, in six years of trying, did you figure out a way to get Lindor out as a catcher? <laughs> Every time I thought I figured it out, he he found a way to beat us. Uh, no, he's uh, that's one of the things that's special about him is you you know there, there's elite players in this game and, and he's one of them and uh, you you can't keep getting them out the same way. They they make adjustments and he's very good at doing that. And um, like I said, I I'm I'm very glad I don't have to try and figure out uh, you know how to get him out now. Thanks. Mike Puma from the New York Post is next. Hey, James, uh, you've obviously caught some very good pitchers with Detroit, the White Sox. Uh, you're going to have Jacob deGrom here, a guy who's won a couple of Cy Young Awards. I'm wondering, is there a, a certain pressure that will come with catching a guy like that, given how much uh, – Every time he pitches, he's under the microscope, and you know, one run's a big deal. One pitch is a big deal. Yeah, uh, you know, I think that I, I think that Jake is is a phenomenal pitcher. I think that um, he's going to rank up there with with some of the best that I've I've ever caught. Um, and I, I think that uh, the pressure really for me is to get onto his page. Um, you know, he's a guy that, uh, has found success and, uh, sustained success at that. Uh, so I, it's my job to come in and, and figure out how I can make him happy, figure out how to, uh, you know, best make him who he is. Um, he's not a guy that, uh, you know, I'm going to come in and try and try and change or try and do something different with. It's a guy that, that I need to get on his page. And, um, you know, the, the best way to do that is just to, to catch him and get to know him. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm really looking forward to, to learning from him as well, because he's, uh, he's obviously mastered a craft that, uh, that few can master. What have your uh, interactions, if any, been with him to this point? Yeah. So we, uh, we, we communicated a little bit in the off season and, uh, we actually had some good conversations today, uh, just kind of talking about, um, you know, what, what he likes to do, uh, what his, his, uh, his approaches um, and really just uh, like, like I said, me trying to get down his page means I'm going to ask him a lot of questions, probably to the point where he gets annoyed by it uh, because I, I know uh, the little bit that I have dealt with him. I, I know, uh, you know, he's kind of a, 
a, a no funny business type guy. Um, so I'm sure my questions will eventually annoy him, but uh, it's, it's just going to be me trying to, trying to figure him out. Thank you. Next question is from Tyler Kepner from the New York Times. Hi, James. Um, I just want to ask you about the, the team around you. The Mets have made a lot of like uh, real depth moves in recent days, you know, bringing in Pilar and, and Jonathan Villar and Almora and, and the, you know, some pitchers with, with some names. Um, maybe not like the $150 million types, but sort of solid guys all around. What do you think about the, the makeup of a team like that that's kind of has, has a lot of depth but maybe didn't go get five huge free agents? I think, um, I think depth is really important. Um, you know, I think that uh, the, the teams that have the most success in baseball oftentimes have the most depth. Um, you look at teams across, uh, you know, in, in the past that, that have had, you know, deep playoff runs and, and World Series runs. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a, when one guy goes down, it's a next man up type, type scenario. Um, you know, the teams that uh, – Starting lineups are, are really good and maybe depth not so good. You know, it's one injury away from, from falling too far back in the standings to be able to make up ground. Um, so I think depth is really important. And honestly, I, I really like the moves that, that the Mets have made with, with those depth pieces. Um, I think that uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, a, a, a great team does a lot of little things well. And I think that the pieces that have been put in place here um, are guys that can do a lot of the little things in the game well. Thank you. Next question is from Jake Steiner from the Associated Press. Hey, James. Uh, you guys are obviously coming off a, a 60 game season that had its share of difficulties with the protocols, with the schedule variants. A lot of things that I imagine mentally were pretty taxing in addition to the physical stuff. Uh, my question is kind of twofold. I'm just wondering to what extent was last season uh, difficult and taxing compared to maybe what a regular uh, standard season feels like? Um, and are you nervous or, or how do you feel about the idea of stretching that over 162 games? And what do you think are going to be the things you can do to, as an individual and as a team to kind of navigate that? Yeah. So I, I do think that uh, there's a lot of, a lot of different stresses that went into last year. Um, you know, one thing 2021 has that 2020 didn't is uh, pretty much everyone's been through the protocols. Everyone's kind of figured out, you know, what makes them work under these types of conditions. Uh, the difference, like you said, is going from 60 games to 162. Well, in the 60 games, there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of uncertainties, um, you know, leading up to the, the spring training 2.0, summer camp, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, guys were sitting at home wondering if, you know, how much they need to ramp up, how much they need to be hitting, how, you know, nobody really knew anything. Uh, whereas this year, guys have been able to prepare for spring training like it's a full 162. Um, you know, I, I don't know the the impact that uh, only playing 60 games and now jumping into 162 will have. I think that, you know, only time will tell. Uh, no one's ever been through it. Uh, so from an innings standpoint for pitchers and games played standpoint for players, uh, it's going to be up to guys to to really take it upon themselves to um, you know, make sure they're doing the, the right things to keep their bodies healthy. Next question is from Howard Magdal from Baseball Prospectus. Thanks, and good morning, James. Uh, I, I'm curious if you could tell me, you know, there's a, a different people have different uh, arguments about how many at-bats it takes, how many plate appearances, how many innings for – uh, a sample to be statistically significant. Uh, and I'm just wondering from, from you, from a player point of view, you obviously have seen your career take off and, and reach another level the last couple of years. A, was there a moment where you felt both offensively and defensively, like, all right, this is here to stay, this progress, this improvement. And also, do you look at the numbers and say, you know, geez, I, I got to do it over a certain period of time for me to feel really secure in what I'm doing? Yeah, well, uh, my, my first answer to that is going to be um, everyone has a different, different journey. Everyone has a different path. Um, in today's world, everyone wants, you know, immediate results. Everyone wants the, you know, the Mike Trouts, the, um, you know, Ronald Acuna's that from day one in the big leagues, they're superstars. Um, 
But if you look back over the course of, of the history of the game, there's a lot of players that, that really didn't blossom into who they were until, uh, you know, three, four, five years into their career. Um, I, I'll, I'll never forget uh, my first year of pro ball. Um, I was in high A. I got called up to, to double A at the all-star break. And uh, the first month of double A in my first year, I, I mean, for lack of better words, I got it handed to me. Um, and I remember Al Kaline, uh, who at the, at the time was an assistant to the GM, uh, came into town and we were just sitting in the cage talking. And I remember him telling me that it would take well over 1,500 at-bats of minor league at-bats to figure out who I was. And then he said, and then it's going to take you another 1,500 at-bats in the big leagues to figure out who you are. He said, uh, and they said, and once you do figure out after those 1,500 at-bats, it's probably going to change at least one more time in your career. Um, so, you know, there's a hall of famer that that's telling you, or, you know, telling me as a young player, you can't fret over, you know, hundred at bats, 200 at bats, a season's worth of at bats, um, because it takes time. And, uh, you know, again, in today's world, everyone wants immediate, immediate results. Um, so for me personally, it was, uh, it was the off season after I was non-tendered where I, I kind of went back to the drawing board and, um, you know, long story short, I, I became content with who James McCann was. I stopped trying to be somebody that I wasn't. And, you know, my career was able to take off from there. Um, so I don't think there's a magic number for each individual. I think that everyone has their, their own journey and their own path. Um, and uh, I, I don't think that there's ever – I think there's a point where you figure out your routine. But I think the minute that you think you've got it all figured out is the minute your career is about to be over. So I, I don't think there's a time where you can really sit back and say – you know, I've got it figured out. It's like riding a bike now. So I just don't think there's that that point in, in anyone's career, honestly. Next question is from Mark Healy from The Wave. Good morning, James. Um, you know, the Mets, whenever they have an all-star catcher, uh, success follows. And, you know, whether it's Mike Piazza, whether it's Gary Carter, whether it's Jerry Grody, whether it's Paul LaDuca, players, uh, catchers who have played a big role, uh, you know, the team success usually follows. So there's going to be an inordinate amount of pressure uh, with that. You know, a lot of people are going to look at you as uh, being the quarterback on the field. So uh, with that in mind, how much of a how much of, of a role are you going to play in the uh, with the pitchers, with the bullpen on a day-to-day -day basis? Will be, you be in the meetings? Will you be coordinating with the pitching coaches, uh, you know, and, and as well as the, you know, the bullpen alignment and things like that? Is that something that you uh, have done and have you been told that that's what's going to be expected of you? Yes, absolutely. Um, that's, you know, I, first and foremost, uh, my job is uh, defense is number one priority. Um, so that, that includes everything, you know, obviously the receiving, the blocking, the throwing, all that, that you see, um, you know, from a, a fan standpoint, but, uh, even more important is, is the, the, the pregame and pre-series planning. Um, you know, I, I feel like a, a catcher is the general on the field. Um, they are the, you know, the quarterback, like you said, they're the, you know, they're the manager on the field. They're the pitching coach on the field. They, they kind of have to play all those uh, types of roles. And, um, that's, that's hundred percent how I view myself. Um, you know, I tell my, my pitchers, uh, you know, I, I feel as much pain as they do when, when they don't have success, um, uh, because it's, it's as much my, my ERA as it is theirs, as much my, you know, wins and losses as it is theirs. Um, so I, I, I'm right there in, in the trenches with them. And, um, you know, the, the pressure that, that the media or that the fans uh, that, that that may come with 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 the the territory there's just there's no pressure that that anyone could put on me that I haven't already put on myself um, you know that's kind of how I, I view uh, my position and, and what uh, my strengths are and and I hope to to take advantage of that. Next question is from Tim Britton from the Athletic. Hey James, I'm just wondering. Um, what life is like away from the facility in Port St. Lucie for you guys? Like, what are you allowed to do? How free are you in moving around around town um, to try to like grab something to eat or something? I, I really don't know the truth about, to that answer. <laughs> um, I know if I stay at my house, I'm, I'm okay. Um, but no, I, I think the, you know, some of the things that stick out to me are uh, no indoor dining. 
Um, you know, no going to, you know, the bar or the clubs or, you know, stuff that is pretty simple to understand. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, going to the grocery, that type of stuff, that's, you know, that's part of daily life. You can't not do that. Um, but really it's just, it's just being smart. You know, there's no reason to go to a, you know, a bowling alley or, you know, even, you know, those innocent type things indoors. Um, you know, really the, the way I view is if, if I'm outside and, and, or I'm at my house, I'm, I'm doing okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, I have a wife at home. I have two twin boys, you know, three-year-olds at home. Um, I've got teammates that are high risk. Uh, you know, so I, I, the way I view it is, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to lay low and, and I'm okay with that. Thanks. Final question is from Mark Roseman from Sports Talk New York. Hey, James, uh, we know that you are a tireless worker and, and you're always striving to improve your defense. Your work with Jerry Naren documents that. But you, you mentioned Brian Schneider, and you know, I don't know how many people realize this, but Brian is ranked 30th all-time Major League Baseball percentage court stealing. Um, and that's one of your metrics that's very high. What do you hope to um, pick Brian's brain about to try and help you improve defensively this season? Uh, simply put everything. Um, you know, I told him, we've talked on the phone, uh, in my career, I, I never had a, a catching coach per se, um, on a, on a staff, uh, you know, in Detroit, I had a bullpen coach who had, was a catcher, but he was, you know, busy doing stuff with, with pitchers. Um, so actually having that, and then that's why I reached out to Jerry Naren and, and got in touch with him, uh, was to, to seek that outside, uh, you know, the outside help. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to having a relationship with, with Brian and, um, you know, really picking his brain on everything from, you know, what he had success doing as a player to how he, you know, game plan to how he watched video, uh, really everything. And that's, um, you know, that, that's something I try and do with, with every individual that I meet in the game is try and take at least one thing from them that, that works for me and, and hopefully it makes me better. James, thank you very much for your time this, uh, this morning. All right, y'all take care.